and it's going to take about 20 seconds for everything to go live so just uh, allow me that this time so that i make sure that the feed is going is running well the before i start the introductions so it should be streaming in about 10 seconds okay perfect we are live so welcome NTO investors and most importantly welcome John welcome Axel and welcome John Walsh as well and thank you so much for joining me here today so for those of you who don't know me I am just an MTO investor and a youtuber and I am really even surprised that they have agreed to come uh, to my channel to do this live stream. Um, but I am really, really grateful that this is happening because I, I really believe in this project and I really feel that uh, this is the kick that this project needed to go back up uh, to, to, the, to the really uh, heights that we have during the ICO. Um, so that's my introduction for myself. So I will just give time to John and the, both Johns and Axel to introduce themselves. So go ahead. Yeah, oh, thank you, Victor. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for having us here. And um, yeah, I'm John Cabring. I'm uh, the CTO of, of HIPS and I've been in, in the payment industry for over 20 years now. So I'm very happy to be here. Yeah, hi. I'm, my name is Axel Arvidsson. I'm the CEO of HIPS and I've been with HIPS since uh, mid 2016. Well, Hi, I'm, I'm John Walsh. I'm going to be joining as the risk officer for HIPS, and I'm very excited to be here and uh, speaking with you, Victor. Perfect. Thank you again, guys, so much for joining us. So just a quick uh, kind of like recap of how the format of this call uh, is going to go. Um, as I say, we did the introductions. I will give some time for uh, John and the team to talk about what MTO and uh, you know the merchant token is all about and then uh, we will uh, kind of like a clarification on what this is about and most importantly then we will jump about uh, five of the major questions that the community has been able to gather and then of course a conclusion and I'm hoping not to keep you here uh, too long so would you like to just start and talk about you know what this MTO on the merchant project is about yeah sure uh, so if you if you allow me to, to start from from uh, from 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 the very beginning uh, about 20 years ago when 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 you know everything come, came to life with with hips how hips started I would absolutely have actually very interesting story so go ahead a bit of li a little storytelling um, no, so I founded a, a company back in in, in uh, 99 called Samport uh, okay. Samport was a Swedish uh, Swedish company that uh, were helping um, e-commerce uh, merchant to get paid online and uh, back in, in, in this time um, there were no, no payment gateways for e-commerce available so uh, th there was a project in Scandinavia called SET, SET payments that IBM run so there were no way for if, if you wanted to, 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 to charge card online you had to run through IBM systems Okay. And, uh, you know, for, for a small merchant, that was just not an option. Uh, so I, I believe the price to run through the IBM system was like you know, $10,000, something wow. like that. So um, we developed, uh, a friend of mine had a, a, a store, or, or the parents had a store with the, this kind of POS terminal back then. Uh, POS terminal is the terminals, you know, where you, where you run your, your credit card through uh, to get paid. And uh, at that time, th those were very unsophisticated machines. They had like a, they looked like a calculator. They had a, a little display and, and uh, two two lights or, or LED lights, and one green and one one red. And um, you enter the amount, and if the the transaction was approved, that the green light lit up. So we found out a way to connect uh, a parallel port on a PC to the LED lights and okay. also to all the buttons. Okay. So what we did was that we made a, 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 some kind of a simulated um, human pressing all the, those buttons, entering the key number manually into the terminal, and then uh, listen to, to, the, to the light. So if it was a green light, we approved the transaction, and if it was uh, red, it declines. Uh, so this was uh, the, the, the terminal was connected via modem, so only one transaction at a time could could be processed. So there, there was kind of a delay to getting the payments done, but it was fully automated. 
Wow. Uh, so we believed we were, I, I, I don't want to claim that we were the first ones, but we were definitely the first one in Scandinavia to do this. Um, and uh, this um, couple of years later or some, I think one year later or something, uh, this was discovered by the banks. They were not too happy about this. <laughs> of course, I can and, imagine. Um, they asked us to, okay, you, you have acquired some merchants now. Uh, you, you have to be connected into the bank system some way. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so we were the first connection ever to, to, to connect to something called SECAMP, which is the Central for Electronic uh, Card Transaction back then. So it, it was a bunch of ATM machines and we. Um, so we were quite successful. We, we acquired um, a, a lot of merchants for, for e-commerce transaction, but we also started with, with, with terminals because okay. we thought that the terminals that we had in Scandinavia but by that time was quite primitive and uh, there were fancy cool terminals in in uh, the united states then and they, they were also in china so we we imported new new brands um and uh connected them to our payment gateway and and uh, started with a, with a terminal business and uh e-commerce business um so that company samport uh continued like that we, we had a, a, a cutting edge technology uh, the company uh, became Bambora uh, late uh, around 2010, okay. and uh, was acquired by Ingenico in uh, in the early uh, tens. There, uh, remember the year exactly. Um, but there's where where a team um, of of, uh, of people that were very early in Samport, including myself decided to. Uh, first of all, we we got a non compete clause when we sold. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we couldn't be in the payment industry at all after that. So, uh, but but we we wanted to work together. We have created this at Samport, and we um, uh, we started another company, uh, exploring a little bit in, in Bitcoin by okay. that time. Uh, so we were very early in in that. Uh, okay. Couldn't do too much with with Bitcoin uh, at, at that yeah, time. Yeah, well, well, at first, of course. UK. It's it's kind of you know. Uh, even, even, you know, but, but, uh, so we, we were interested in that, but there was no real, you know, real world use case for it. It was hard to, to, to make money on Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, so we, um, we thought, okay, what, what do we have? Where we have the terminals? We, we know a lot about payment terminals and payments. So what can we do with this without going into the payment space? Mm -hmm. So uh, we figured out the, the food delivery area. So um, we started a company called uh, Pizza24. Uh, okay. in, in a couple of countries, in, in all the Scandinavian countries, plus a few other countries, uh, which is uh, very similar to Uber Eats or Delivery Hero or uh, okay. those companies. Wow. Um, and what we did was that we were using the payment terminal uh, as an order uh, acceptance and, and um, um, yeah, an order acceptance system. So when there was when there was a new order online, the restaurant, they received this message on the payment terminal they already had in store. Okay. Uh, so we just added an application on, on that terminal. Uh, it was printing out the order bong uh, with exactly what was ordered and to which address. And they could just enter the, um, uh, the, the, um, the minutes, the delivery uh, time. Okay. Uh, and we got that back to our system and, and, and we could, you know, uh, somehow still be in the, working with terminals, which we had a lot, lot of knowledge uh, from and, and, and be in another segment. Um, so um, on that platform, we also accepted Bitcoin payments back then. Okay. Wow. Um, and that was, uh, that was, we were very early. I, I, I think we were, uh, I'm, not, I, I'm not claiming this, but uh, we were very early, maybe the earliest in, 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 uh, in Scandinavia for, for uh, accepting it in mainstream at that level. We were talking about maybe here 600 or 1000 merchant locations or something like that. Wow. Uh, it was not a big success. I mean, we had we had payments, uh, Bitcoin payments, but we, we, we discovered something new. Um, whenever there was a timeout of a payment or, or there was some kind of problem, uh, we had to manage it manually. There was uh, like a lot of disputes on on, on crypto payment that we, we didn't have a normal payment uh, mm -hmm. that was more related to technical issues. Okay. Um, so we, we developed a, a kind of a dispute system uh, that will, I will talk, touch that more a little bit later, but we developed that system so that we can, could control 
uh, or, or refund people that you know had technical problems and, and follow it up. Uh, anyways, um, we, this area was just something that we did just just to to have something to do when we couldn't be in the payment space. So. When our non-compete clause ended 2016, uh, we founded HIPS. Um, so HIPS is, is more or less uh, back to, to basic, back to what we knew with, okay. with payment systems. So you already and, basically uh, have that kind of like experience as well on the crypto market as well. And you are bringing that here into MTO. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so with, with, with HIPS, we, 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 we are still a few years now before MTO. Uh, but but when we started HIPS, uh, our our goal from from the start with HIPS was oh let's compete to the big guys. We okay. want to compete with with Klarna uh, or, or the other Swedish big fintech companies, and um, you know we, we had everything we needed to do it. We we, we I mean we had all the, the, the full payment gateway. We we started to contact um, banks, uh, larger bank to help with with the credit, uh, and um, we were quite successful. Back then, not absolutely not as clear as today, but we were quite successful. We made some kind of footprint on the market. Okay. So the banks that that helped us with the credit, they came to us and said, "Listen, how can we do this? Can we can we start competing with? We we want to do what you do, basically." And uh, we said, "Okay, maybe maybe we we are really good at you know creating gold access, but we are maybe not that good as as banks are to 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 axe." And go for the gold. So mm -hmm. let's, you know, let's create the gold X, the payment system, and let other people or other companies um, go for the go for the merchants and go for the for the for the customers. Um, and we can do what we are good at, and, and they do what they are good at. So we we so that was a big pivot point for for Hips. Uh, we changed everything, going from from being a, a single. Uh, tenant system to a multi-tenant system uh, okay. with with white labor, white labor possibilities and everything. So that's what we did, and we started to onboard the first financial institutions and banks. Uh, so it was like Bank like, uh, Bank Santander and Handelsbank in Sweden, and a lot of other financial institutions. Um, and also, it, it came a, a bit good in time because uh, around 2016 and forward. It became somewhat more easy to become a financial institution than it was before. Uh, so suddenly, everyone wanted to start with card issuing or or, or merchant acceptance or whatever without creating the, the full system around it, the technical platform and and all the you know the legal requirements around it. So we we kind of made this this box they can buy from us and 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 become their own uh, payment facilitator, start issuing cards or accepting card payments in terminals and. And do everything. So we have the software for for everything. So that's kind of what what Hips was. Mm -hmm. And uh, by that time, we, we hadn't introduced crypto at all to to Hips. And uh, two years ago uh, now, we we said, okay, crypto is crypto Smooth. is is really starting to be a thing, and crypto payment is is, is a big thing. But uh, what are we going to do with, with with the you know the the dispute uh, the consumer protection and, and the dispute management is still that's going to be a big problem for us. And we also, you know, even even though we do KYC on our clients, mm -hmm. uh, we don't know if they are if they are uh, you know good or, or, or bad merchants, right? Um, so at the end of the day, we don't know if they are going to ship you know an iPhone or, or whatever or of just course. ship a brick. So so uh, we need some kind of dispute systems for for customers. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so we started to develop what we have done previously in, 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 the, in the Pizza 24 business that we have and uh, developed this dispute system and, and did it really well. Uh, then DeFi came mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, we had seen the smart contract before. We, we I mean, uh, we really didn't understand it from, from the beginning. Uh, I mean, uh, it, it sounded very, very, very uh awesome and you could do a lot of things with it but we really didn't didn't see DeFi coming the way it did uh and it came and we thought okay so DeFi is probably going to put us out of business in a few years and that's you know i'm sitting yeah. here with a smile and say that, like that is something good but you know it's it's not it, it's definitely not impossible but okay 
until the, the until it's uh, the, the consumer protection is solved, there is no way that that uh, crypto payment will uh, will uh, take over from from central payment schemes. Because if you go to if you buy through PayPal or or, or a company like that, you know that if, if they if they don't ship the phone or whatever you buy, you know you can always go to them and to them and, and, and dispute the transaction. Which is exactly and, uh, which is exactly what I love about this project that it is targeting an area of uh, crypto in general you know that is lacking right now because if you buy something and you pay with crypto you can forget that that, that you even will get your money back so having this yeah. thing this is the main reason why i personally speaking invested into this project yeah and also it's it's uh today when, when you when you see someone if you go to a camera store or something uh and they say we only accept bitcoin or, or mm -hmm. some kind of crypto you instantly, you know, pull your ears back and think, okay, am I going to get it? <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. no, exactly. Why? Why? Why is this? So that's kind of what we want to change. We want we want that merchant to be proud and present uh, that that they are uh, using the the, the hips uh, uh, merchant gateway and that the consumer is protected. This Absolutely. purchase is protected. If you if we don't deliver the camera, then you you will you will get a full refund. And of course, merchants are not too happy about about. I mean, they they don't like chargebacks, and uh, mm -hmm. they're gonna claim that oh no, uh, crypto is good because it's it's free of chargebacks. But the problem is uh, tough luck, merchants. But but the consumer is really the one choosing the payment products because if you don't offer what they want, they're gonna go to another merchant, right? Absolutely. So, and as long as you have a so, good base of of demand, then that will make the 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 the, the merchants have to buy buy to the rules that that yeah. you are setting. Yeah. So the goal here is to to to, to create this this uh, protocol uh, mm -hmm. to to have it as a standard. I mean, we are first. There is nobody doing something even similar to what we are doing. Uh, we want to have. I mean, the, the merchant protocol should be the standard protocol. For mm -hmm. how this dispute management and everything around consumer protection is is uh, is, is specified, then it's up to to you know wallets to to integrate that protocol so they can maybe display a little icon. This is a secure purchase uh, and or or something like that. And and also for merchants to to adopt the the protocol on their side because there is some uh, there need to be some extra con layer of, of contracts that need to be involved. In. But that's and that's what we are developing. So we are developing those uh, scripts and everything that the merchant need and uh, the protocol that the wallets needs. Um, and that's okay. kind of the goal. That's that's what we want. We're going to get out the, the, get the, 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 the merchant protection protocols out and um, have a crypto adoption. Absolutely. That actually sounds like that you guys have the, the the right background and that you know you know kind of like what you're doing so it kind of like it's a good thing to hear that kind of like background of the of the company to to understand yeah. where we put actually our money and where we are headed um, yeah. that actually brings me uh, to the main questions or to the main thing about this call right now which is um, why are we doing a q and a in the first place so uh, I want to actually talk about what kind of like happened and what brought uh, me to contact you in the first place. And it was the, the fact that the, the, the majority of the community that I deal with are concerned about how the project is going. Uh, we appreciate that you guys have a lot of work to do and have a lot of things to develop, uh, but as well, we, we noticed that before the, like during the ICO, uh, the marketing and the Twitter was exploding. So we saw a massive intake of, you know, tweets that were coming out. You guys were doing a, high, a really great marketing, which led actually to a very, very successful ICO. Uh, so our questions are basically, the, the, the main questions here are about communication. Uh, why did the communication fail so drastically? Because we think that by that falling that uh, that bad in the recent uh, few months, it has damaged the project uh, per se. So that's kind of like what we want to kind of like understand from you here today. So what would be the plan to improve this? And if you have the idea or if you're planning to hire a full-time uh, marketing team? 
Um, yeah, sure. So um, mainly after the ICO, our um, communicated uh, communication adjusted back to a more of a business as usual communication from our side. Um, okay. We start to work on the product, etc. cetera. Um, but we probably adjusted a little bit too much. Um, but but we we have listened and and we are readjusted we have readjusted and and that's why mainly we are, we are here today um, okay. to 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 make these kinds of changes and and our intention is to hire a, a full time marketing team absolutely okay. um, and we're going to adjust and improve the marketing like like all of you um, we want to improve the project uh, or the project we also want to do this with the marketing as well of course and like you said it, it was very successful during the ico and that is absolutely our goal uh, going forward perfect so in with that in mind uh, first of all will you communicate more often than once a month and will you do live q and a's like this one for instance more often as well and uh, another question would be if the developers and the marketing team will actually be introduced uh, to us investors. Yeah, so so we're currently going to announce project updates on a minimum monthly basis um, okay. as we have today or as an uh, on an as needed basis okay. or but those smaller updates uh, such as maybe the burn event um, will be announced more frequently. Um, and, and yeah, of course, we'd, we'd love to do more in Q&As and, and interviews like this, um, since we believe it, it can um, open up and, and be open up the transparency of the, the project. OK, that sounds good, which actually you just mentioned about the burning event. Uh, that brings me to a, a second question, actually, that I have here. Um, the burn event was set up by yourself to be on the 1st of September but the date came and went and the tokens were not burned. Personally speaking, I thought, I think actually, I keep thinking that burning those tokens was not supposed to be happening, at least not at this point in time. So that's not my question. I didn't want the tokens to be burned, but of course you agree on that. And I respect that you kept your word. Uh, however, my question here is more about if the deadline is not, uh, going to be respected for any reason. It could be uh, uh, technical issues or something that you cannot control. Uh, and we do understand that uh, the flexibility for such a project like you guys is key. Uh, however, we also want transparency and communication on your side. So first of all, will you be updating the roadmap with the key dates? And uh, secondly, will if you cannot keep up with a specific date or a goal that you're trying to do, will you just kind of like let the investors know in advance that you are not going to be able to achieve that target? And, you know, so that we can actually kind of like uh, be prepared for that. Yeah, so so we believe that flexibility is, is really a key for a project like this. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, this this is uh, this is. As for for any young company or project, uh, the roadmap must always adjust, mm -hmm. and uh, we strive to provide dates uh, for different events and activities. But uh, again, I mean, they 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 need to be pre preliminary and flexible, and, and I think flexibility is the key for success here. Mm -hmm. uh, but we strive to be transparent. Uh, and uh, we, we want to be as transparent as we can without breaking any NDAs. Uh, of course. And, and, you know, uh, so, so uh, yeah, I hope that answers that question. But my question here is a bit more specific. So let's talk about the burning event, for instance. Yeah. Uh, it's something that you were in control. There was nobody else that could have done that. So if yes. you were, if you knew in advance that you were not going to meet that deadline, um, it would have been better for you guys to, you know, come on Twitter and let us know. Guys, I know this, the, the burning event is meant to be to no, tomorrow or even today itself, but we will not be doing it for this, this, this and that reason. I feel as an investor, personally speaking, and I, I feel as well that the community itself will yeah. will take that as a, as a thing. OK, they are actually doing or they are going to do it. They are working on it. They just can't right now. So we wait. So that's kind of like what I feel should happen. Yeah, no, I, I think it's it's um, we probably didn't realize uh, how important those kind of events were to to keep announced. So when we when we adjusted our our communication out, 
uh, we probably readjusted a little bit too much and, okay. and uh, would, would, I mean, in that case, maybe have, have uh, uh, updated community that we delayed that with, with a day, I believe it was. Uh, okay. and, and, uh, but, but yeah, we listen. We listen and we try to, to, to do everything to readjust to, to a good level of communication. We don't want to overflow the social media either. I mean, we want to try to, to have uh, news there and updates that, that really you know, make sense for the community. Okay, I understand. <coughs> um, which brings me to another question, which is uh, when you guys announced in one of your monthly updates that you will be doing a um, kind of like voting system on the website, uh, when will that option become available? Just to have that better communication with the community as well. Yeah. So the voting option is for, for merchant token holders to, to govern mm -hmm. and decide the technical direction of the project. Mm -hmm. So uh, the voting option will be available as soon as there is a, a major technical adjustment that needs to take place. Uh, we are not in, in those uh, technical, uh, we are not really there yet, but it, we will be there soon. Uh, however, in, in the last project update, we announced uh, a voting for, for this European exchange yes. we were talking about. Maybe this is the one you were referring to now. Yes, I think that's the one that the community yes, wants yes, to know. Yeah, yeah. So, so and uh, that voting is will not be required uh, because there will be some exchange news coming the, 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 the coming days, I don't know. So, so okay. there will be some news on this, yes. So we have some news on the listing. Okay, that's good to hear. There will actually, be some news within some a few juicy, days. Juicy, juicy news. That's <laughs> yes. great, actually. <laughs> so um, let's jump actually on uh, another question at this point then, uh, which is partnerships. Uh, we, know, we know that these are very important for the success of a project. And in the crypto space, uh, of course, also listing on renowned exchanges. So we do appreciate that there could be NDAs involved, but... Is there anything, anything significant that you guys are working on the pipeline so you can share again some juicy details here today with me? Um, um, there are, there are some, um, but, but due, due to NDAs, we, we are not unable to, uh, we are unable to disclose um, the full information um, here today in this live. Okay. But, but like John touched on there, um, there will be an, an announcement coming within the few days. Um, Regarding what is is uh, yet to be uh, disclosed, but there will be an announcement. Yeah. Okay. So for all the oh, subscribers, okay. stay tuned. It will be on your Twitter. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So stay tuned and stay literally attached to your phones for that Twitter as well. So there is there is yeah. also uh, except from from uh, from from the news we were discussing. Uh, there there are some uh, some. Um, uh, uh, some uh, uh, announcements uh, that we want to publish, but we have one announcement that are holding back the other ones okay. uh, that we cannot release. And uh, we cannot release the other ones before the first one because of NDAs. So we are a little bit in a hold position, So, but that will also sort out soon. So you will see some more uh, news on that as well. Okay, I'm also hoping that, of course, because you guys are, you know, showing up uh, finally here on this Q&A, people are going to be more willing to wait for a few more days uh, without, you know, <laughs> going crazy as well. Um, you know, Victor, um, what John just said is very important. Um, and, and I just want to follow up on that because yep. rather than give a, a fake answer, like many people do, Nobody, nobody wants to say I, I held up because of these legal reasons and various things, but I think that was a very honest answer that people that are looking at the, the, the token and people are looking at HIPS um, have that choice to say, look, that's an honest answer. They'll get back to me. And I think the way he said that is absolutely accurate. And that's what we need. And that's why we're exactly. here. And I think if we do this more often, I think uh, particularly if, if you invite us back again, we'd be more than happy to come and have this dialogue and, and keep everybody up to date. And, and that's exactly my point. And that's the reason why actually I insisted uh, to, to have you here and I contacted you in the first place. Uh, the problem is not about missing a date. The, the problem is not an update that it cannot come out. Guys, I, I have been managing businesses for, uh, for a better part of my life. And even in silly things, you sometimes you cannot meet a deadline for things that are out of your control. And everybody will get that. I, someone that like smart enough to invest in crypto will actually definitely get that. What we are expecting here is to hear from you and you tell us, 
we know we, ha we have something that is meant to be coming in two days, in a week, in a month. We will not be able to make it because of this, 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 or even just I cannot share my, much information because of NDAs or whatever, but we are working on that. And that reassurance, I think, will benefit a lot the, the, the team or the, the community. And that's exactly what the community is hoping to get from you guys. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. So, so let's that, just, that, yep. No, no. So uh, again, that, that's where I was, was touching before that we are, we are, uh, we are listening and readjusting. Amazing. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. So let's just jump on the technical side and I'm just speeding up because I don't want to keep you guys so long. I'm sure, I'm sure you guys are very busy as well. Um, but I want to jump on the technical side. So first of all, do you have any updates on the development of the mainnet? And have you had success in hiring a team of developers? Yeah, so, so first, uh, th so there are two, two product legs here. So we have uh, the, so mer the merchant ecosystem here. Okay. Uh, is, is one, one leg is the consumer protection part uh, with the smart contracts that, that enables this. The second part is to have the POS terminals on the blockchain, the second thing that we want. Uh, okay. So uh, we have a target uh, date kind of for the, for the MVP for POS terminals on blockchain. So uh, as, you, as you see, uh, have seen before, we have announced uh, that we will do this for uh, uh, taxis in Scandinavia. Yep. And uh, we aim to do that in November. So that is still, you know, the kind of uh, date, if you will. Um, so that's what we are aiming for right now. And uh, that is also something that we are looking forward to, to demonstrate for you once it's go live. Or, or you, you can, I mean, if you live in, in, in those cities in Scandinavia, you can just jump in a taxi and try it. Unfortunately, uh, I'm in UK, but I know you guys are going to do something in UK as well. So I yes. will definitely just jump in one of those taxis. I would love to do actually yeah. uh, maybe a video about it. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's, I mean, that's the, that's the goal. And the, the goal there is, is uh, for, for, for November. Um, okay. And uh, so, and regarding the dispute protocols, um, the, the goal right now is, is to have the MVP ready uh, for uh, merchant and wallet integration in, in Q1. And that is, Again, an MVP. It's 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 a very early stage product, uh, but it should be uh, ready enough for wallets and merchants to start using it. By when? Do you have any date on that? No, I mean Q Q one is is what I can say now. Q1. Uh, I don't want to disappoint you by moving dates. So no, 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 absolutely. So, when we yeah. So so th so that's 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 all I can say now. Uh, but but yeah, we want to get this this out as soon as we can. It's just. It needs to be developed first. That's, that's, Absolutely. that's it. And, and that's, um, again, I, I want to really kind of like focus on that point. Uh, like, and I, and I think I'm speaking about from the community because that's what I heard from them uh, lately. It's not about you guys not able to, uh, to, to mark a target. It's about the communication. So that's literally, yeah. I want to clarify that because I don't want you to feel as well that we as investors, we don't understand that you guys have a lot of things to, to go through. It's not only the, the technical side, but also the legal side and uh, bureaucracy can be crazy. So we definitely understand certain things. It's just simply about having that more open communication. And as you say, guys, you are, you are, you are improving that. And I love that. I, I really love to hear that from you guys. Right yeah. Now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, no. And, so, and the, se the yep. second question you had about about uh, developers. Is, yes. Uh, we have I mean, we have successfully extended our, our, our team of, of um, developers specialized in, in the technologies used by Merchant Protocol, but okay. but uh, but we are still looking for talent specialists in the blockchain development. I mean, there there are. Uh, it's it's a bit of of of, uh, of uh, lack of uh, of the really specialized one that we need. Uh, okay. It's not a lack, but they are probably they are hard to find. So Absolutely. If if someone is watching this and and you know uh, really have have this this uh, spe specialized uh, skills blockchain. within payments and blockchain, I mean, uh, reach out to us. Uh, let me know um, later on you can, if you can send me the email address of where they can contact and I will sure. definitely link it down below, put your, the email address that you, that you want me to put for them to contact and also I will be sharing it in all my, uh, my, my social media and ask everybody in the MTU Army to share that so that we can try to find the blockchain developer, which I know 
they are very very hard to find yes yeah. <laughs> good so they are like literally like unicorns right now <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. which leads me actually to my last question for today is what expectations should investors have of HIPS following this Q&A? Yeah, so uh, I think that merchant token holders, they can expect that HIPS will continue to, to develop the project and that HIPS, uh, once the project is ready, uh, transfer it to the community as, as we have written in, 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 in the white paper. Okay. And uh, I mean, for as long as, as HIPS are token holders uh, of the project, because it will be a, a community owned project sooner or later, we will make everything uh, we can to make sure that the project is adopted with, within the HIPS ecosystem with all the merchants that we have uh, somewhat control over. Uh, and yeah, that, that's, that's kind of that. And I've also, I've also heard uh that um there were some questions about the coin coin market cap oh uh, yeah that's actually something that a lot of people in my community has been asking do you have any updates on that yeah so so th this is also something that we didn't knew was that important we we were listed at, at uh, coin gecko and okay. uh but but uh coin market cap uh, has uh, um a, a little bit different uh, approach that, okay. that than Coin Gecko. Okay. Uh, so when we listed on Coin Gecko, we didn't have the parts available that Coin Market Cap wanted by that time. Okay. So so and 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 that is a position we we ha we are have been in for a while now. So it's it, it for Coin Market Cap there will be there will be some updates. Okay, that's actually great to see. Um... I am really, really happy. These are, the, as I say, the main questions. I am really happy to hear, guys, that you are going to improve the communication, which in my, on my side, I believe was the most important part uh, to improve and to boost the token. And I really, really hope that by even just doing this Q&A, the price uh, will be boosted so that, you know, people will feel more confident about the project as well. And... I really wish you the best to be able to develop uh, all the technology, which I know is going to be a really, really long journey for you as well. Is there anything that you guys think that you want to share with the community before we end this? I think, I mean, we, we all uh, are sharing the, the common goal here uh, to, 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 to make this extremely successful. And, and, and uh, let's, let's do this. Absolutely. Well, guys, Thank you, John. Thank you, John Walsh. And thank you, Axel, for joining me here. As I said before, you are very, very welcome to join me again. If you want to do this on a monthly basis, I am here. Uh, as I say, I'm, I'm working everything. I'm doing everything I can to the success of this project. And uh, I really want to, for this to take off as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let us have a talk about that later on. And, and thank you very much for this uh, Q&A. Absolutely. Uh, thank you as well for the community, for those of you who have joined. All the most important links will be in the description and have a good night. Perfect. I have